Welcome to this class where I will be showing how to resolve the stress. We will start with the simple examples and then progressively we will get into complicated things such as the Mohr circle. Let us look at how a stress can be resolved when the plane of consideration is horizontal and on which a stress acts on it. Imagine this is a horizontal plane and on this plane a compressive stress sigma acts. Just to recollect what is stress, it is equal to force per unit area. Now, this line of action of stress can be thought of having two important things. One is plunge, another is trend. The downside of this green line is towards that direction. Imagine that is x degree measured from north. So, x degree measured from north is the trend of this line. Now imagine this line of action of stress has got theta as the plunge. So I write this as the trend and theta is the plunge. The question is on this plane HK how much is the normal stress acting, how much is the shear stress acting. To do this we drop a normal from here and therefore resolve sigma as sigma n and sigma s. This is a sigma s direction. Shear stress is the one which acts along the plane and normal stress is the one which acts perpendicular to the plane. Now in this triangle ABC, in triangle ABC, in this case sigma n divided by sigma is equal to sin theta and we can write in this manner, this is equal to AB divided by AC. So from here we can say that sigma n equal to sigma multiplied by sin theta. Here sigma n and sigma are in terms of the magnitude. And if we write by the way as a vector addition, then I have to write in this way AC is equal to AB plus BC or in terms of symbol sigma is equal to sigma n plus sigma s. These are the vectors and the addition is a vector addition. So once you write in your paper these should be written in bold font. Bold will indicate the vector. So this is a vector addition. It is not 3 plus 2 equal to 5, not in that sense. Okay. Now back to this, we have shown the normal stress is equal to sigma multiplied by sin theta. Again, we will look at triangle ABC and this time we write cos theta is equal to BC divided by AC. Now BC is equal to sigma S and AC is equal to sigma. Now we can see cos theta equal to sigma S by sigma. Therefore, we can say sigma S equal to sigma into cos theta. So we have got two relations, relation 1 and relation 2. Now it can easily be seen that sigma n divided by sigma s is equal to tan theta and that is logical as you see here AB length divided by the BC length is equal to tan of theta. So I can write this as our third important relation. Now from this right angle triangle I can also write that AC length square is equal to AB length square plus BC square. So from here we can write sigma square equal to sigma n square plus sigma s square. 
Also from the right angle triangle we can see that AC length is bigger than AB length and AC length is bigger than the BC length. So that will mean sigma n has to be less than sigma and sigma s has to be less than sigma. So these are the two inequations I can write them as number 5 and number 6. Okay. Now what we have done in terms of stress we can look into it in terms of force also. For example, I will redraw it over here and quickly we will have a look what happens if instead of a stress I apply, I consider force that is applied in an inclined manner on a horizontal plane. So here also we can resolve this force into a normal force and a shear force theta like this is the plunge of line of action of force. Here we can see similar results will come out for example, if n equal to f sin theta, if s equal to f cos theta and f n by f s equal to pan theta. Then so you see that when we are dealing with force we are also getting similar relationship. From here one can easily again go back to these relationships for example, from here if I write in this way f n divided by the area A where is the area A say this horizontal plane has got an area A. In that case it is equal to f by A multiplied by sin theta. So from here equation 1. Similarly, from here if I divide this by the area A and the area A it will go back to our equation 2 which is here. And similarly, if I divide this by A and by A it goes back to our equation 3. And like this we can also write from this graph from this diagram f equal to square root of f n square plus f s square. Note that if instead of a horizontal plane which may be rectangular if some irregular geometry is given these deductions do not change at all. Okay? Now let us have a look how to resolve the stress when the plane is not horizontal. In the previous example the plane was horizontal how the stress is to be resolved when the plane is inclined which is a geological case. Imagine AB is an inclined plane and it has a dip of theta angle. This yellow line is horizontal plane with which AB line is making an acute angle that is the dip of the plane. Now on this AB plane. A stress of magnitude sigma acts and the line of action of this stress has a plunge of phi 1 and has a trend of y degree. This line has a downside towards that direction so that means this geographic direction is y degree the trend. In fact, in the deduction this trend will not come into the picture. So y be whatever 10 degree north, south or 270 degree it will not come into the deduction. Now the question is how much is the sigma n the normal stress acting on the AB plane and how much is the shear stress sigma s acting on the AB plane in such a case. At this phase I would request the students to stop the video, try to solve, take few minutes time and in case you cannot solve then you have a look but I would request the viewer first to try. 
Okay. I hope that you stop the video. Now, this is the way to solve. Phi 1 is the plunge. We have to bring phi 1 into this diagram. To do that, I draw a horizontal line passing through this point. And therefore, this angle is phi 1. If that is so, then also you have a look, if this is theta, this angle is also theta because these two are parallel lines. So therefore, this angle is given by phi 1 minus theta. Next what to do? I have to drop a normal from this point on the plane AB and this is the normal stress and this is the shear stress which are the components of sigma. Let us say this point is P, this point is Q and this point is R. So, I can say PQ is the normal stress and QR is the shear stress. Now, in the triangle PQR, this angle is 90 degree. Therefore, sine of phi 1 minus theta, this angle is given by its magnitude divided by the magnitude of this vector, which is equal to So, from here we can write, from this we can write okay. and similarly we can write So, what is the main difference we see? from the horizontal plane case. In the horizontal plane case, there was a theta angle plunge and that theta was utilized in such formulae. Whereas here, we have done the plunge of the line of action of the stress is there and then there is a theta deep of the plane subtraction has been made and that has been utilized. So, from here, we can also write this is also possible. Now, instead of stress, if we think in terms of forces, like instead of sigma stress being considered, I considered a force. Instead of sigma n, which was here, I considered f n. And instead of this, which is sigma s, I considered f s. Then what will be the expression? The expression will be F s equal to what I did sigma is replaced by f that is it and so also will be here in fact this would be equal to note that in this case the deep direction of the plane a b is same as the trend of line of action of stress this is a case where the deep direction of a b plane is same as or equal to the trend of line of action of stress or force whatever you say. Why it is so? You see that the plane is dipping in that geographic direction and the line of action of stress is also having trend in the same direction. Only when that is true, then these deductions will be correct. And what if it is not? So, before going to the next problem, let us have a look in three dimension what we have done. The plane was dipping in certain direction, the line of action of stress was like that. So, this green chalk has a trend in that direction and this plane also has a dip in that direction. They are the same, only then those deductions were correct. And before that what we did? The plane was horizontal and line of action of stress was there. Note in both the cases, the trend value was not used. In the horizontal plane case, stress is acting, this line has a trend, that trend was not utilized in the deduction. 
and in this case also the plane has a dip direction same as the trend of the line this green chalk the trend value y degree whatever it be it was not utilized. Now we are going to see another case where the plane is dipping let us say in this direction and the line of action of stress is in opposite direction. So you see that the trend of this green chalk is 180 degree opposite to that of the dip direction of this plane. Say this is north then this is south if it is north east then this is southwest. if it is 35 degree then this direction is 35 plus 180 degree just 180 degree opposite to each other. In that case how do I find out quickly the normal stress and the shear stress that is applied on this plane. Let us have a look. So this is a plane AB which has a trend Z degree measured clockwise from the north direction. And here is a line of action of stress sigma. It may have some value in the numerical calculation we give some value say 2 Pascal or 3 mega Pascal or 5.2 giga Pascal or few dyne per centimeter square or few Newton per meter square these values are given. Okay. And note that this line has a downside in this direction. So therefore, the trend of this line is z degree plus 180 degree. As I told you if this is north direction then this has to be the south direction. And imagine that this stress has a the line of action of stress has a plunge of phi 2 whereas the plane has a deep amount of theta. The question is on a b plane the normal stress is how much and the shear stress is how much. So I would request the students, the viewers, the listeners to stop the video here and try by your own. I hope you have stopped the video for a while and tried and here is a solution. So if plunge is phi 2, I can draw a horizontal line from here. So these two lines are parallel because both are horizontal. With respect to this line, dip was defined with respect to this. Phi 2 is defined, phi 2 is that acute angle which I have shown. Now I will draw, construct a right angle triangle. So this is 90 degree. This stress can be resolved into a normal stress and a shear stress. So in terms of vector, I can write sigma in bold equal to sigma n in bold plus sigma s in bold. This addition is a vector addition. It is not that 3 plus 2 equal to 5, not in that sense. Okay. Now, this triangle I can give a name ABC. We can now understand if I get this angle, then the total angle can be found. Once the total angle can be found, sigma n and sigma n can be expressed in terms of sigma. So, what is this angle? If I take this diagram here, for a complete clarity, and so you can see if this angle is theta, this angle also has to be theta. So, I mean here this angle has to be theta. So, that angle ABC is equal to theta plus phi 2. What major change you find? In the previous solution, there was a subtraction involved and here it is an addition. So this is a major change that is happening. Now I can write from the triangle ABC, sigma n is equal to, this is sigma which got suppressed here, I take it out, revive sigma here, is equal to sigma sin theta plus phi 2 and I can write sigma s equal to sigma cos theta plus phi 2. Therefore, I can write sigma n by sigma s also which is equal to fn by 
एफ एस विच इज इक्वल टू टेन थीटा प्लस फाइव टू ओके अफकोर्स इन दिस केस एंड इन द प्रिवियस केस ऑल्सो इट इज ट्रू दैट सिगमा स्कोयर इज इक्वल टू मैग्नीट्यूड वाइज सिगमा एन स्कोयर प्लस सिगमा ए स्क्वायर दैट इज टू ऑल्सो हैपन हाउ डिड आई गेट दीज टू इक्वेशन्स जस्ट लाइक द प्रिवियस प्रोसेस बट लेट मी डेमोन्स्ट्रेट इट इन डिटेल इन दिस ट्रैंगल ए बी सी रदर द एरो शुड गो लाइक दिस बिकॉज हियर आई विल राइट समथिंग फ्रॉम वेयर दिस विल बी डिराइव्ड इन द ट्रैंगल ए बी सी आई कैन राइट ए सी डिवाइडेड बाई ए बी ए सी डिवाइड बाई ए बी इज इक्वल टू साइन थीटा प्लस फाइव टू नाउ ए सी इज इक्वल टू सिगमा एन एंड ए बी इज इक्वल टू सिगमा सो फ्रॉम दे आर दिस कैन बी डिराइव्ड and how do i derive this within the triangle abc i can write bc divided by ab is equal to cos theta plus phi 2 so from there i get this relation from these two i can also write that so this was a case where the line of action of stress is in this direction having a trend in that geographic direction that is the downside of the line but the plane is having deep direction just opposite to that only in that case these deductions will be valid so we have seen so far a case where the plane is horizontal a stress acts and we resolve the normal stress and the shear stress then we took a second case when the plane is dipping in one direction in the same direction is the line of action of the stress and we found the normal stress and the shear stress then we took the third case when the plane dips in one direction and 180 degree opposite to that another line a line of action of stress is there and from there we resolve the normal stress and the shear stress now we will take a most general case and this is most important what if none of these are the cases for example the plane dips say towards you and the line of action of stress is neither plunging this way perfectly opposite to the plane nor is plunging perfectly along the direction of the plane for example the plane dips towards you but the line of action of the stress goes like this so you see in this case in this line this is the trend and this trend is not matching with the deep direction of the plane this plane has a deep direction shown by my finger and this line of action of stress has a trend which is in this direction they do not match how to handle that problem so i can write down the problem on the board so this is the problem now we are going to use stereo net there can be geometric methods of solving another can be we can straight away use a stereo net and see how to solve okay so this is going to be our stereo plot and i write north south east and west so this is a center imagine the given plane has this strike and i draw as a grid circle so what is this this is a given plane on which sigma n sigma s to find out now the line of action of stress if it is plotted in terms of plunge and trend say that is the line of action of stress now you see that the trend of this line is neither along the deep direction here 
nor opposite to the dip direction. Okay. So, our job number 1 is to find out the pole of this plane which is from here I have to move 90 degree and stop. What is a pole? For a given real plane, I can think of an imaginary line which is perpendicular to the plane. This imaginary line is called the pole of the plane. Plane is a real one, pole is an imaginary line. So, by moving from the dip direction up to here and then 90 degree inside, I get the plot of the pole. Now, I want to find out the angle between the line indicated by the pole and this line of action of stress. So, what I need to find out is find out angle between stress direction and pole. To do that I have to construct a great circle passing through these two points. So, say this is one point and from the center the opposite point is here. So, the great circle will look like this almost like that. So, this is a great circle by moving the tracing sheet on the stereo net I can find a single great circle on which the line of action of stress and the pole are plotting and I draw that great circle. Then from here I can find out the acute angle here which is the theta. So, theta is obtained and now let us have a look on the blackboard sketch on the green board sketch how this pole the plane and the line of action of stress look like. Imagine this is the given plane A B and its line perpendicular to A B this imaginary line is the pole. Now, the line of action of stress works on the plane in this manner and from this angle theta acute angle what have I found is the acute angle between the line of action of the stress and the pole. So, this theta has been obtained. Next I have to resolve sigma into sigma n and sigma s. To do that say it was a compressive stress. So, I put an arrow here I drop a normal here the normal stress and this is the shear stress. Now, we see that this blue line and this line are parallel to each other this is the angle theta. So, therefore, that angle is also equal to theta. So, in a right angle triangle we have brought this theta angle inside this is the right angle. So, if I take this point as A this point as M and this point as K then in the triangle AMK what do we see? Sigma N equal to sigma cos theta be careful here this time it is cos theta because theta is here and touched with theta is this sigma n side. So, therefore, sigma n equal to sigma cos theta. In our first example today when the plane was horizontal there sigma n is equal to sigma sin theta, but here it will be cos theta and the, the next one will be sigma s equal to sigma sin theta. If you are not happy with to see sigma n and cos has come then there is a way out you can find out of course, this angle we call it phi and we can see that theta plus phi is equal to 90 degree. Using this relation this relation and this relation we can write sigma n equal to sigma sin phi and sigma s equal to sigma cos phi. So, it matters which internal angle you are considering if this is the angle phi then you obtain theta 90 minus theta you get that phi apply the formula or be alert once you got theta sigma n is equal to this sigma s equal to that. Just like the stress has been resolved in this way force can also be resolved and needless to mention 
that sigma n by sigma s equal to here it will be cot theta cos theta by sin theta 